you. Because the person that's coming on is an entrepreneur, is a booking agent, is just a powerhouse, right? When it comes to creativity and music, the music industry and the arts and entertainment industries. Welcoming via Zoom is Jalan Kamabach. Welcome, Jalan. Hi, morning. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to chat with you this morning. I know that it's a short time because there's so much that we could talk about, of all course. the things that you're doing. Um, yes, But yes. for persons who don't know, let's backtrack a bit. Who is Jalan okay. Kamabach? Okay. Um, well, I am a booking agent now, and we own, we actually upgraded and changed the business into a talent management and booking agency. Nice. So that's what we do right now. Yes. Okay. And I am the owner of, of it as uh, right now, as you know. Okay. Yeah. Owner and CEO. How did you get involved in this? How, what was, where did you first discover your passion um, for the industry? Okay. Well, actually, it started a, a while back um, as a teenager. So I was, um, at the time, I used to be involved in a lot of parties, committees. Okay. And um, getting into going to a lot of events and parties, I started getting a passion for well, I guess, um, you know, entertainers um, at, at that time because I, I felt as though they could do more. Right. And doing events, I felt I couldn't help them in that way. And I decided from doing events, I was like, you know, I think I could add more value if I actually um, get into management, which I didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought to myself, you know, I could help. I have some ideas. I think I could do this. I think I, you know, and I started getting into it um, more and more. So right. that is one of the main reasons why. And then, you know, a lot of people used to complain. Eh? So, you know, artists, at that time, a lot of DJs used to complain about marketing, about branding, and, you know, getting people representing. They mm -hmm. want to do more, but they don't know who to go to. They don't have any place. They have any agents, have no managers. So I saw that opening. Right. As I'm listening to you speak about your journey, which is amazing, by the way, um, you know, I'm thinking of our daily inspiration for today. So every day we start mm -hmm. off with a daily inspiration. And the quote for today was to be the change, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know who said it, but I know we, we haven't said it enough. And so listening mm -hmm. to you, I see that you saw that there was a need for change and you became that. Talk to yes. us about that, that journey, because I'm sure it was not an easy you know, um, walk in the park journey to get to that point of you doing this and making that impact? No, no it was not easy at all because everybody thought at the time, um, I'm making a mistake, mm. this doesn't make any sense, Jalan, this don't have any money in it, Jalan, go and get a job. Mm -hmm. J like, so it was a lot of that at the time. Even, you know, particular, even some of my family members, you know, used, were saying that at the time. Right. Saying, you know, get a Jalan, go back to school, don't do this, this have no, th there's no future in this. And when people saying that um, to yourself, you have to know to yourself, okay, you have to have that conviction to know, okay, if I'm doing this, I have to do this right. Yes. Because everybody doubts it, man. And, to prove everybody wrong, I have to go in 100%. Mm -hmm. So, and I knew to myself, there is a need and there is a bigger future and vision and growth within our industry, um, especially just in entertainment, because we're in the entertainment business. It's not just soca or dance or, and entertainment is forever. We need, yes. and every human being needs entertainment. So I knew, well, okay, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not true. So just a matter of finding out and getting a system that would help to bring out and for it to make money. Because I believe in anything, it could make it make money. money yeah. So it's just a matter of how you do it, how you present itself, how you market it, and what you're selling, the service you're selling. And, you know, of course, it's a matter of, you know, what people want and you give, you, you fill in that void. Yeah. Let's unpack mm -hmm. the, the aspect of it being the business of entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. we see artists, we see musicians and talented mm -hmm. people, you know, a lot of talent and they're doing mm -hmm. what they love because they love it, but right. it doesn't pay. So let's talk right. about moving from just being talented to now, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a businessman, a businesswoman and being paid right. for your talent. Okay. Well, the first thing that a lot of, um, you know, entertainers slash artists don't do, I, I, I find personally dealing with a lot of them is that they don't do any research. Mm -hmm. They come into this business and think that I like to sing and it will work. 
and you just put out songs and it just and, and it doesn't work like that. Yeah. So anybody that is successful in this have of course have information, um, have a team mm -hmm. of people that are experts in different fields that know what they're doing, and they have a plan, a short term or a, and a long term plan of okay, how are we going to do this? So that's where you kind of turn it into a passion into a business. You have to have a plan. Yeah. You have to have a team. And the artists themselves, especially in this era, in this time, you have to have the information for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't depend on somebody to tell you, hey, go and read this or go and watch this on YouTube. Or, and at this present time, there is too much access to information to come and say, well, I didn't know. Didn't know. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not sure. Or, oh, I didn't know that. And, and, and oh, I didn't know this was going on in, 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 um, in England or mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. or That's not the excuse anymore. So, but that's why a lot of artists don't do. They just think that they have a good song, they could sing, and it will work. And as we can clearly see, talent is 10% yeah, yeah. of this. Yeah, you it's 10%. Yes, you mentioned something really important, and that is investing in a team. It's not, yes. you know, you may see one person, so you see you know, the, the, the soca artist who has been, you know, um, performing for mm -hmm. many, many years and is known internationally. Right. But behind right. that person, there is a team. Talk to us about the Correct. persons that make up that team and how important it is to invest in a team. That team. Okay, well, most of the artists that you see, especially that, that are relevant right now yeah. and that are very successful, right? It's not really relevant, more successful for mm -hmm. a sustained period of time, has a big team. Right, so they would have managers, right? Um, some of them have local managers and international managers, mm -hmm. right? Some of them have, of mo everyone has agents, so they have booking agents that handle just bookings of shows. A lot of them have publicists, yes. a lot of them have, of course, DJs, a lot of them have stylists, a lot of them have assistants, a lot of them have just, uh, just different people, you know, drivers, even drivers. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have a lot of people that are within the ecosystem of their team yes. for this to work. You know, of course, they have their own producers. Some of them have the, the, the personal producers. To, whereas if you want to do a song with them, this is the only producer that can mix the mix vocals. Song, this is the yeah. only producer. Right. So they have that, they have that internal team um, in terms of even for just music. So they might have a, a business team. They have my business managers. They might have their own promoter because if you see a lot of shows happening now um, with artists, so you're seeing, you know, Marshall has a show, mm -hmm. but Marshall has a promoter that does the show. Right, yeah. So it's not Marshall himself doing the show. It's mm -hmm. not Patrice herself doing the show. So you have the team of, you have promoters, you have um, you have assistants, you have the publicists, you have your, your music team, which would be probably your, your writers, you have your producers, mm -hmm. you know? So you have a lot of people. So if you're going to come out with come a song, you have all these people that are involved with this one particular artist yes. that, are, are part of the process of this song coming out and this song is being a hit. Or sometimes, you know, you, you don't know what a hit is, but you have this song being backed by this amount of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a marketing team sometimes and all. So you have all these things that 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 are part of this one artist. So when you see the artist come out, it's not just one person. It's videographers, it's a lot of people involved. And especially the bigger the artist, the bigger the team. The bigger the because team. Because it's, it's more work, mm -hmm. especially... In locally and internationally. It's a yeah. lot more. Yes, you know? it, is, it is more than just deciding I want to sing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It starts that way, but it's not just that. So yes. that is a misconception that a lot of people have thinking. You see people on stage and you think it's easy. Mm -hmm. You think it's, hey, I just wake up today and I could sing a song. You could do that in your bedroom, mm -hmm. but to do it on a stage for 10, 15, 20 years yes. at this level, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Coming out of lot. this, out of this, and you know what is needed. What are some of mm. the post carnival observations? You know, you've been to the events. Um, I know there were mm. artists that you were working with as well. Yes. But what are some of the things that you think we we just came out of a pandemic? So there are mm. certain things that we needed to adapt and adjust, right? And we right. came into this season now, and there are things that need to change. What are some of those things that you've seen? Um, but from an artist perspective mm -hmm. or just a general perspective? In general, yeah. In general? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, I mean, I find professionalism, boy. I yeah. think professionalism is lacking um, all wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say that, I, I, I mean to say 
um, in terms of communication, in terms of um, just like even paperwork. A lot of promoters still have this very lackluster, lazy fair attitude of they call the artists themselves right. and they talk a small talk and say, hey, come on, have an event. Like that type of things have to cut out. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I mean, it got better over time, mm -hmm. but it's still there where people trying to not, you know, do it in the correct business way, yeah, which is the con yourself, yeah. document itself, send an invoice, or even talking to relevant people mm -hmm. because of carnival, they have a lot of artists that, I mean, people are busy, so they have representatives, they have either a booking agent or a manager or both, yes. and some uh, some promoters don't want to talk to people, they want to talk to the artists because they think the artists will get them for a cheaper price, mm -hmm. and so we still have this problem, and I think it's a Caribbean culture problem because we don't really encounter that internationally at all. Okay. At all. Yeah, a lot of, and promoters internationally don't even want to talk. They want to talk to the agents or they want to talk to the manager. They don't want to talk to the artists. artists so, yeah. I, I, right. And I think that is a cultural problem that we have. So, professionalism, I still think lacking. Communication, I still think lacking. Um, and artists themselves, I think a lot of artists, they, they're not prepared. Mm -hmm. they, they, they sing the same set in every setting, mm -hmm. hmm. right? And and I think that's an ex that's an ex I think that's a problem. Yeah. You can't sing the same. You can't sing our same set in Fire Fed, for instance, than Curacy All Inclusive. Right. So you're adjusting to it's your a, audience and, and your correct. setting. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And a lot a lot of them, I notice they set just the music, not the dress code, because they're dressing everybody dressing well. But right. it's just the set. Some some of them not adjusting the set to the audience. Mm -hmm. And my observation is a lot of artists um, don't perform to a lot of time. Okay. So if it's sometimes the promoter might say 10 minutes, but they're doing two songs and leave. Mm. Which is another problem, I think. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have that problem where artists rushing their set and then now the crowd upset because it's like, but why are you saying one song? Yeah. Sometimes it's not the artist's fault, granted, because I had that problem too with promoters only want one song, but the bigger the artist that becomes a problem right. because the, the the crowd wants to see this artist for, for at least 20, 30 minutes. They want and the then catalog, yeah. them, Right, they send them mm -hmm. two songs and then there's a problem and then, and then of course, every, so it's, a lot of those things happen. So um, a lot of the promoters, I think, need to revisit that aspect of it, that if you're booking an artist, especially with a bigger name, mm -hmm. you can't tell them to sing one song. Yeah. Or two songs. Yeah. Even if you're paying the full price, yeah, they have to sing because the crowd doesn't understand that. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a problem to the and the blame goes on the artist. Yeah. Because it's like this artist is shortchanging us type of thing. Yeah. And moving right. back to the business of of you know um entertainment in mm -hmm. and in the industry, you know, how mm -hmm. important it is for artists to diversify. So you've seen oh. where the, the powerhouses, mm -hmm. the bigger artists and they, they mm -hmm. have, you know, business, they have other aspects right. of it. How important mm. it is to have that, you know, especially because the pandemic, we, we didn't have performances, right. we didn't have events. Right. You know? It's true. I, um, I think it's very important. I think every artist, because if you really watch it, and, and, and this is the, the problem that I used to explain to artists before, you are a business. Mm -hmm. You are a business. Now, for instance, um, I would use, I mean, even Marshall Montano. Marshall Montano is a person but he's an entity, he's a business. Mm -hmm. So he's an artist and the artist aspect is a business. So once you're in this, you are doing, you're doing business. Mm -hmm. So it is important to have different income streams of any business. So in entertainment, you might have, you know, Marshall might sing, that is one income stream. Then you have publishing, you have distribution. Right. You have, um, of course, you, you, you might have um, brand deals, you might have sync deals. And then, of course, if you're coming out of the entertainment business, then you, then you could leverage his brand into getting, um, maybe doing toys, maybe selling clothes, maybe selling chocolates, maybe selling food, maybe mm -hmm. selling drinks, maybe. So there's, you, there are a number of income, income streams you could, you could get from just being an artist. But a lot of them, now I, I'm realizing the younger ones are getting smarter. So the, the younger ones are patterning themselves and getting into different businesses. Okay. But it is very important to diversify the portfolio because you can't depend on singing alone or live performance alone mm -hmm. as this is one income stream, as you said, the pandemic. So yes. if that one income stream stops, then what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, even definitely. saving and investing yes. as well. If, right, that's our next big thing too. You know that a lot of them. I I I hope that they starting to do more research. That they don't just spend all the money because of course we we saw a lot of cases you know in the mm -hmm, past where mm -hmm. we see artists you know they get older and then they're asking for money which is disheartening, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very disheartening because you know the misconception is that they don't make enough money and that's not true. They yeah. do. They yeah. spend it badly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to really say that truth. Everybody's saying, you know, gosh, we, we have to send them money. And it's like, well, these people making, you know, making a lot of money, eh? yeah. as contrary to popular belief. It's just a lot of them don't invest it. They don't spend it properly. They don't save. They don't have a plan. And they don't have some of them don't have the team of people to, to guide them and tell them, okay, put this here, put that here, invest here. Maybe pay yourself a salary every month instead of just spending the money one time and you know right so this is these are the things that i think it's improving but it's something that we need to speak about a lot more and i would like you know something that i i hope you could see that a lot of the financial institutions in the country would get involved by giving artists um or education, like mm -hmm, a session mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. saying, come to the bank, let us explain how to open our bank account. Let's explain what is unit trust, why it's important, what is um, a credit union, why it's important, or just in, in the investors, you might have GMMB to open a stock to a shares account. Like these things, I think, need to be done because right. a lot of them don't have, don't know, and they nervous or they might not know, okay, how to open a bank account, yeah. a business account, or like these things, especially as an entrepreneur or a business a creative, owner. Yes, yes. A creative, mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of them don't know or they don't, you know, they, they think, you know, I'll just put the money on my mattress, I'll just save the money, I'll just have it tomorrow. Like, things like that, which I know we in 2023, you know, we need to yes. get out of that type of, you know, that type of mentality now. Yeah. And you need to, and a lot of them don't like to spend money mm -hmm. on people. They think that they, they shouldn't pay anybody else. They think that I'm singing so I shouldn't pay anybody else. But it's the investment in the team, you know, the team Correct. that will help you push the work and right. all of that. And and right. coming back to you, I mean, because you have spent mm. many years in different ways, you know, giving advice, mm. you know, so even to. with this interview, the things that you're saying, you've mm. been doing podcasts, you've been doing um, vlogs right. over the years. And, you know, yes. talk to us about the, the, the need that, you, that you've that you seen to give mm. this advice. So you're not gatekeeping. You know, we, we no, know that word no. comes up in the industry sometimes. Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. but you does, have been does. freely doing doing podcasts, you know, giving the information, telling people where they can find out, you know, about these resources that can help them. Yes. Um. Again, the reason why I started doing this is because when I came into the industry, mm -hmm. uh, when I came, I could name on one hand how much people actually gave me advice. And I always mm -hmm. shout these people out because they're the only two people ever really helped was Ion okay. Panton and Simon Batiste. Okay. And, well, Kess team at the time. So it was Kess and they are the only people ever come and say, hey, you should maybe read this book. Maybe you should, you know, you should do this or maybe you should do this yeah. or, like, pull me aside. Hey, Jalani, I like what you're doing. Maybe you should consider doing this. Hmm. You know? So at the time, and everybody else, and this is a, a, a thing that I, I keep seeing people saying, well, people will help and people, you can't call any of these people hmm. if they don't know you. Yeah, you can't. You, I mean, people say, "Well, my phone number is, you know, it, it, it's it's really available. You can you can call me." That's not true. Mm -hmm. If they don't know you, they don't and they don't respond and not answer. So I decided upon myself, as mm -hmm. much as given, much as expected, mm -hmm. I said, since I got these great opportunities and I was blessed to work with great artists, especially the bigger ones from different countries, and I get to travel all over the world, I said I need to share what I learned. Yeah, for free. Mm -hmm. because I can't talk to everybody every day, but what I could do, I know I could put out the videos, I could put out the audio for free. Yes. So I could share the information of what I know, mm -hmm. of even what I pay to know. I paid lawyers, I have a lawyer, I have accountants, and I would learn from experience from them, and I use what they taught me mm -hmm. and put in a podcast for free. People pay for, you know, sometimes for consultation. I used to pay to find out, okay, what is a sync deal, or what is publishing, or what yeah. distribution. And I say, you know what, I need to share this information with people mm -hmm. because I wasn't lucky enough to have anywhere or anywhere to read, mm -hmm. anywhere to go to look or to listen for information. Yeah. And I tell myself, I say, you know what? The next generation, even our generation back, 
I will do this for them. Yeah. I will send whatever I know. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, and, and I will put the information out for free, and even they can message or email, and I'll respond. Yes. What platform uh, can people can people access this information on? Like, what's your websites, your social media handles? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, oh, yeah, I mean, Jalan Kamabach on, on everything, but on, on the podcast, same thing. It's Jalan, Jalan Kamabach podcast on, a, on all the podcasting platforms that mm -hmm. you can get podcasts on Apple, Spotify, um, YouTube, same thing, Jalan Kamabach, and all social media platforms. The Jalan Kamabach podcast, easy. Mm -hmm. And you can just log on, you know, not a problem. And I respond if a message for a question or you want to link to a book. Or, because I have a lot of the books PDF, so sometimes right. if somebody messages me, I will just forward the book to you. Hey, you should read this book. Right. Or you should listen to this because I have a lot of other podcasts I listen to for information. Right. And I will send them a listen to this podcast weekly to get information about the music business internationally and all these things because I constantly look for new information mm -hmm. to keep abreast of things. And I think it's important because, of course, I think as my accountant used to tell me, information is, is, is best it's best shared. Shared, exactly. Not, yeah, best shared. Yes. So I try to share that. Yes. I want to thank you, yeah. Jalan, not just for your time this morning and, and giving us, you know, this insight into you and your journey, but also for mm -hmm. what you've been doing over the years, you know, um, with, with giving Thanks. the information and with giving advice, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I, I myself has, like, have experienced that as well, too. You know, so I want to mm -hmm. say that we appreciate you. Thank you for okay. joining us um, this okay, morning. Okay, thank you very much for having me. No problem. This okay, has... go back to do this a little more. Yes, this most definitely. Yes. Most definitely, okay. yes. Okay, this no has problem. Been, this has been AM Prime. Thank you so much for staying with us.